Hello and welcome to another episode of the Business of Business podcast. I'm your host, Roy. Of course, we do bring you a wide variety of guests and uh, talk about a lot of diverse topics. And today's no different. I'm very excited to have Gordon Glenister with us. Uh, we're going to have a very uh, robust conversation. I know going forward, I've been looking uh, forward to this for the last couple of weeks. He is an influence influencer marketing strategist. He's the global head of influencer marketing at Branded Content Marketing Association, he, the CEO of Membership World. Gordon was formerly the Director General of the British Promotional Merchandise Association for 11 years, then launched his own membership consultancy in September 2018. Gordon is also the co-founder of the Top 100 Most Influential People Index, which is a product promoting eminent people in specific industries. He is also a well-known speaker on membership and influencer marketing. He is a keen traveler. He's a badminton player and looking forward to resuming both post-pandemic. Gordon, thanks so much for taking time out of the day, your day to be with us. Oh, it's a pleasure, Roy. Lovely to see you. Yeah. Now, you know, this is such an exciting topic because it's, uh, you know, with the advent of social media, I think it's blown up and we think of it, I'll, I'll say I think of it in a little different terms, but I'm going to let you explain. First off, just tell us what is influencer marketing, you know, kind of how, why it's important, how we can use it. And then also it's not necessarily new. And I'll let you tie that up for us. <laughs> uh, well, 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 thanks, Roy. And thanks for the uh, introduction. Um, I mean, in should I just tell you a little bit about my background as where I came from to actually be in this sort of space? Um, because I think it has some context. Um, you mentioned you mentioned uh, that I'd um, been involved in the British Promotional Merchandise Association. Then I set up my own consultancy in uh, 2018. Um, but I, um, I'm still relatively new to the sector, actually, myself, only less than sort of two years. But my background has come from the sort of association world. Um, and I've, I really believed that there was nobody representing the sort of influencer marketing industry. You know, it's, it has had a mixed media profile, should I say. Um, some people's vision of what an influencer is very different. Um, so um, what I wanted to do was to uh, launch an association in the UK that represented the industry. And that's what I did in 2019. Subsequently went on to write a book and also a podcast. Um, so because of that, I, I, I did quite a lot of research into what influencer marketing was, 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 was all about. And you know what? It's nothing new. You know, it's just got a nice, shiny new name on it because fundamentally it's it's still word, word of mouth marketing, you know. And we were just talking before this about um, a Marlboro man, weren't we, and Aunt Jemima. You know, these were individual folks that we might have followed, um, even Coca-Cola using sort of Santa Claus. So, you know, we, we trust the opinions of our friends, our families, or people in authority much more now than, than traditional advertising. In fact, there was a piece of research done, I think from Business Insider or one of the big um, research organizations that said amongst Gen Zs, um, that very young audience, they trust traditional advertising to the extent of just 1%, <laughs> um, which is uh, remarkably low. Um, so, um, I mean, basically, I mean, influencer marketing is, is basically happens when an individual is involved in a pr promoting a product or service. And, that, and, that, and that's it. Um, the way I would determine an influencer is somebody that can affect uh, a change in behavior of others through trusted opinion, knowledge, and content. Uh, so it's very simple in those terms. Anybody can actually become an influencer. And, you know, when you look at some of the, the big names, the Kylie Jenner, the Kardashians, and all these, these, these well-known celebrities, of course, that was who we would have looked up to um, uh, some time ago. But, of course, what we've now seen is a growth in what we call micro and nano influencers. And these are individuals that have got much smaller followings on social media. 
Um, but what they have got is a, a passion and a cause for their for their product or service or their their genre. Yeah. And um, and I, I mean, even a, a fly fishing expert that has a thousand followers on Instagram could be an influencer because all of the people that are following that individual are are absolutely interested in the content that that, that, that fisherman is creating. And that's what I think is really exciting is how the range of di different diversities of niches of, of, of populated for influencer marketing and for brands. It's an amazing opportunity for them to tap in to those individual voices that can therefore amplify their brand message. Yeah. It's in, and just as you were talking, I was thinking that, um, and I'll let you answer this, but more of a question is, so back in the day, it seems like, you know, when we talk about the Marlboro man, he was one guy that represented one product, one brand, where it seems like in influencer marketing of today through social media, typically what I think about them is that they are people that have their own audience for some reason, for whatever content they're putting out there. We just happen to put our product out there for them to represent or you know maybe they they represent multiple products instead of just being uh totally aligned with just one brand nowadays yeah i mean what we're doing is if you want to work with an influencer you're buying into their audience right um and 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 let's not forget that those um and by the way a lot of them tend to prefer the word content creator yeah. um uh, as a sort of a term um but, but they will have taken time to develop that audience. And, and uh, if it's engaged, in other words, they're very responsive, they're commenting and liking, they're, they're being consistent with when they put out their content. It's not just, you know, one post every now and again. It's, it's you know, two or three times a week at a set time. Um, you know, they are, like, like any community, um, they want their audience to grow. They want them to be happy and engaged. Yeah. So that is so when they get when they try and create a brand collaboration, as they call it, they want to make sure that it aligns with their values. And that's super important because sometimes brands that connect with influencers don't always get a response. Yeah, <laughs> and the reason yeah, they yeah. don't always get a response is because for some reason, uh, well, A, they might have communicated in the wrong way, or B, it just it just not. It's not what the influencer wants to do to promote it. Um, interesting enough, um, something like two thirds of them now will um, uh, reject brand opportunities based upon their ethics. Wow. So if they don't feel that they they have strong ethics, yeah. like they look after their people, they are doing the right thing for the planet or whatever, um, then uh, they will reject them that's that's actually a pretty cool thing I, I, I applaud them for that for you know kind of doing the screening because i as we were talking through that i was just thinking about the other part of this is that you know as a person that wants to well before we even jump into that i want to say there are two kinds of influencers there's that person that maybe they've built their own audience doing different things you know we could say like the kardashians or people that i think about you know they're all over the place but they're all over the place because of themselves, because of the things they've done to generate that. Mm. Now we can put our product with them for them to represent it or placement or however, that's one form. But the other form I think that we want to hit on a little bit too, is that um, I could become an influencer with the content that I create, maybe for a, a lot smaller universe than somebody like the Kardashians, but still, you know, for my industry, for my uh, association, for my charity that I represent, or for my friends and family. Is that mm. correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, I was talking to um, somebody about this the other day um, that is a locksmith, <laughs> somebody that just goes and fixes locks. And he was talking about marketing and he was, going to create some some really cool videos about um uh, you know the, the, the what what he does in the course of his day yeah um so what, what ultimately you want to be um if you in this, this is if you want to be an influencer you've got to be the go-to person right and being the go-to person that thinks about 
you and what you do for a reason you have to have you have to have a purpose that uh, that that people i would say um a brand is what somebody says about you when you're not in the room right <laughs> <laughs> and and it's very very true um and we you know when you do we, we, we were talking earlier when we were about tiktok and, and tiktok is largely a a younger platform up to the age of 30 or 40 per se so us older guys maybe not on there but you know what i've seen one or two lawyers on there that have really tried to create a different story that is non-stuffy that is fun and quirky but super engaging um and and they've got great audiences because what they're doing they're breaking down the stereotypes and they're they're they're, they're actually they're educating a younger audience around the law but doing it in a in a fun and engaging way yeah and for full disclosure before i brought gordon on i made him sign a uh, release that he was not going to make me create a TikTok video on, on <laughs> me up here dancing so, so the audience will be safe from that <laughs> so let's talk about that you know the um so the influencers screening products and brands that they're taking on, which I think that is so awesome. I, I really can't, I mean, I'm glad to hear that, that they're being particular about how they treat employees and their business processes. That's awesome. But let's talk about the other side of that coin. Uh, as a professional services, uh, I need to be very careful who I select to represent me in that space as well. And, and then the other thing about, um, Everything is always great today, but let's just say they have a come apart or something goes bad for this influencer, you know, mm -hmm. three, six months from now, how does that wash back on me as somebody that's put my brand with them? Yeah. Well, that's, that's a, that's an issue of course that's, that, that, that exists in any shape when you're using, cause you're dealing with, you're not dealing with a product, you're dealing with a human being, aren't they? And they are prone to, I mean, look at Tiger Woods, for example. Yeah. Tiger Woods, a phenomenally successful individual, but he went through a really bad patch, didn't he? And uh, of course, lots of brands had to pull away from, from, from what was going on. Um, I mean, all I would say, though, is you must do your due diligence before you work with uh, an influencer. You need to make sure that they're follower base is authentic. There are lots of tools out there, by the way, now that you can influence the platforms, um, that you can uh, determine whether or not they bought any followers, because the last thing you want is mm, you yes. don't want you don't want um, an inauthentic audience. Right. And also, if you're, let's just say, um, your audience is very much Texas or American based, you know, and you thought, oh, this is a great guy I want to work with. But actually, little do you know that 80% of his follower base is based in the UK. <laughs> yeah. um, and if you particularly wanted to work with, with guy men more than you would women, then you need to make sure that the individual you're working with, his follower base is equally so. Because that's what you're effectively buying into, yeah. is that audience. Um, and, and, that, and that could be part of the, the conversation that you have with them at the early stage. Just want to have a, an understanding as to, um, I mean, sometimes they would share their insights with you, which you can, of course, see on Instagram or, or whatever, any other platform. But also there's lots of um, social media metrics, yeah. uh, platforms that will allow you to do this. Um, the other thing you need to make sure that, Roy, is that somebody, um, they haven't worked for a competitor. Uh, okay. Because what you want them to do is it's like, for example, uh, it would seem somewhat inauthentic for somebody one minute to be promoting Coke and then Pepsi, you know, a little later down the line. <laughs> right. You know, it, yeah. it, it, it would mean that they're, um, you know, the, the ideal scenario is for you to find an influencer where you can create a strong relationship that isn't just necessarily a one off campaign. But, but ideally, you can look for, um, you know, like um, a long term, almost like ambassador program. You know, that's the that's the growth at the moment. Lots of organizations are now looking to recruit influences initially for campaigns. But then some of the best ones that really do resonate and deliver amazing results 
uh, to recruit them for longer term ambassadors. And that's also good for the audience, by the way, because if they see if they see a brand being promoted by their favorite influencer once, yes, they're going to, you know, they're going to react to it, but they're going to react to it a lot more if they see that post and um, video content consistently. Yeah. So for example, brands like Boohoo, which is a big clothing uh, brand, um, they will have um, Boohoo ambassadors, you know, pretty little thing ambassadors, lots of big clothing companies and fashion brands. Yeah. now you use this process yeah. so yeah and i just want to make a note about the followers and I, I will say that this is something i luckily very luckily learned years ago is that you know i had a guy told me he could help me generate some uh you know some traffic on some social media and i said great and then all of a sudden uh he was correct he generated a ton of social media traffic it just happened to be from a different continent on where I live. And then, you know, it's like I told him, okay, these people are not my clients. They're never going to be my clients. So it's like, you know, totally, it was totally a vanity metric at that point. And anyway, it's a good lesson to learn, but going back to what you said is, you know, if we do want to hire somebody else to do this, you need to check them out any way you possibly can to make sure that, because, you know, I could have had a million of these followers, but they would not have been anybody that was going to buy a product based here out of the US. So very important. So, it's better that you have a smaller audience that's relevant yes. uh, and authentic because yeah. so it, it's not, and that's why a lot of the big organizations now will hire influencers based on their engagement level, not necessarily. I mean, it's not that they don't, dis, they, they, they don't disregard the follower base, but the engagement rate is where it's at. So with social media, it's, it's so worldwide in this space. Are there, um, will you find local influencers versus the big national ones? So, I mean, I, I'm just thinking of a strategy that, well, if I've got a local product, maybe finding that local, but then also another strategy, instead of finding that one huge influencer, maybe you find, you know, four or five, a strategically placed local geographic is is that even a thing or a possibility yeah definitely um i mean and sometimes um when you're running a campaign it's it's worth considering a mix of influences yeah. uh, maybe a larger one with, with a mid-tier uh, group and, and then a, a number of micro and nanos yeah. so uh i mean what's really exciting about having a range of influences is um they are and and, and also involving these individuals not just in the amplification stage but in the co the content creation so that you are um you know what what could happen in other words trying to create a bit of an open brief so that it's not so specific and tied down so you are really allowing these individuals which are very creative by the way to yeah. use their creativity and potentially come back to you with all sorts of exciting ways in which your brand story could be told and promoted because if you've got 10 of them as opposed to just one you've got 10 different and also i mean i was talking to perno ricard actually just just last week about this and they did some um, they did some work with some of their influencers and because of one or two of them that were outside their slight niche, they found a whole new audience of drinkers for their whiskey brands huh. as a result of some, some some of the work they've done with influencers. So uh, that was really exciting. Um, but yes, definitely using local ones. Um, uh, again, another conversation I had with uh, Oxfam, big charity Oxfam. Um, they use influencers really smartly um particularly in i don't know if you have you have charity shops in the states i can't remember do you have we have charity shops here where people can provide donated goods oh yes 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 we do you do, yes. do. fine, fine, fine. Yes. okay so so that's the um so that's very specific where a local where they used um um local influencers to go into to stores and perhaps put on some of these uh these you know Sort of historic 
well, avant-garde type clothing, you know, what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> um, and uh, it was really, it's really good. And, and of course, they were able to promote that on their the, the charity's local Facebook group, and it got it got a really great reaction because that particular item would only be available in that local store. Right. So you could right. see how working with something locally can be very successful. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny. I was just I just wrote down the question uh, as you were speaking about that is about the uh, you know the content creation, and so you know the question was going to be uh, these guys are creative, and I'm sure that they can help. But is this uh, I guess in this world is this something that we put in their hands and say here's my brand and here's what I want to convey? You, you create the message, or do we take them a message to them and say? Here's kind of what I want you to do, or I guess it's probably a mix, but generally, how does that work? It, it, it is it is best when it's a mix. As long as you've got a set of brand guidelines yeah. and perhaps your sort of target audience um, and, and, and some ideas of what you'd like to do, but not, not overly prescriptive, yeah. and then allow them to just do, do their thing. <laughs> yeah. um, and um, I mean, some of the video content I've seen some of these fashion influencers just blows my mind i mean the creativity the tricks you know it's bringing clothing and fashion to life um the other thing of course you can do is think about using links that uh, that attribute the influencer to a specific code so maybe you want to give 10 percent off a your product or service or something where you can then uh, work with the influencer so that they've got something that they can give to their followers. Uh, and of course, what that does is then it, it allows you to say, so you, so you've got 10 or 15 influencers and they've all got their own tracking link code. Uh, you can then determine how successful each one has been about driving sales back to your website. Okay. Interesting. So again, very, very effective uh, method of, of doing that. I mean, we shouldn't forget these individuals, um, you know, are often, uh, I mean, the average age of an influencer is 28. <laughs> wow. um, and they are digital, digital native. Yeah. So they're, but they're, you know, they're, they're videographers, they're photographers, they're community builders, they're editors, they're script writers, they're bloggers. Um, you know, these are, if, if you think about the traditional way that you go and create a, like a television advert and how much money it would, it, you'd, you'd involve, you'd have to have all these various people to, to, you know, to put that together. Well, potentially you've got that in one person. If yeah. you find the right individual. Um, and that's what I think is so amazing is, is finding these. And what I love is the authenticity of it. Yeah. Um, and there are some some great examples. Uh, I don't know if you're into um, yachts and super yachts at all, but there's a there's a guy actually called uh, the Yacht Guy, and he's got hundreds of thousands of followers. And he always just loved uh, super yachts, so he started many years ago just going to very exhibition shows, just videoing using his little iPhone and just videoing uh, content. And then, of course, he would start to build an audience because what he's doing with his content is bringing the audience into the wonderful world of the super yacht. Right. And uh, of course, he's made he's made these fantastic videos now, and and the super yacht uh, manufacturers are realizing this is a this is an audience that uh, that we should be tapping into. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and they've and then of course luxury towel brands want to want to get involved with him and all sorts of other product uh, brand opportunities can come his way yeah yeah there's a guy i think he's in kansas it's uh not not too far from here but uh i kind of started watching him because what he would do was he would go out and find an old car or an old truck and bring it back in and kind of walk you through what he was doing to refurbish it. And, and all the time, it wasn't always putting it back stock. Sometimes he would kind of, you know, fix them up to be muscle cars or mud trucks or whatever. But, you know, I, I got kind of hooked because it was interesting watching this process. So there are a lot out there, which kind of brings me to the next question I had was uh, the channels. Uh, you know, I think, as we've progressed through social media, my channel of choice 
it depends, but typically just for browsing social media is Instagram. I mean, I just like the pictures, you know, pictures are a thousand words. I don't have to read a lot. And that, so that's where I have gravitated. Now I say that unless it's a how to now, if I'm trying to figure out how to do something different or figure out a better way, then it's usually YouTube is where I go for that. But is there a, is there one channel that stands out where influencers reside or are they just different ones all then I guess, are there different ones for each channel or do some people transcend where they're on all channels? Well, it's interesting. Influencer marketing is on, is on all of them in some way, even on Snapchat. Um, but the, uh, the God of influencer marketing has to be Instagram um, for the reasons that it is very visually striking for products in particular. And of course, with the, with, the, the shopping links and the way in which you can translate that to a return on investment through through activation is, is very good. Yeah. Um, but it does also depend on your product or service. You know, if you were a, um, a financier, a financier or a banker that was, you know, had a particular niche or whatever, you might find that um, LinkedIn or Twitter is more your sphere. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've got a, a far bigger audience on LinkedIn than I do perhaps on, on Instagram. Right. Um, and that is because I've been there, I've been there right at the start, of course, and it's seen as a sort of the professional site. So it, it's all about where are your likely audience going to be, wherever you think they are, uh, and whatever platform you think is relevant, that's where you should be. Um, and, 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 and also making sure that your profile is consistent amongst all of the. So if you go and have a look at, at my Instagram, my LinkedIn, my Twitter, my, my image and profile is exactly the same, yeah. you know, so that people understand. Because as I said to you earlier, you know, a brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Uh, and what we've got to do is create uh, a reference point that people can remember you. It's very, very cluttered online now. Creating cut through and stand out is, is, is ever harder. Um, we shouldn't forget YouTube, of course. YouTube is a phenomenal platform for influencer marketing. Um, I mean, uh, do you ever remember a video? I don't know if you, called Charlie Bit My Finger. Does that ring a bell for you? No, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> well, Char Charlie Bit My Finger is an amazing video. It's created 13 years ago now. Um, and it was, it was just very, very funny, very endearing. Yeah. And it was just literally about a, a, a baby and a slightly older brother um, biting his <laughs> um, in a very gentle way. Anyway, the, the reason I mention it is it has now got. 879 million views wow <laughs> so the, the reason i say that is because sometimes people forget that content on video online keeps generating roi yes. whereas you put a flyer through a letterbox it's thrown in the bin you yeah. put an advert on a magazine and you might well see it if you're lucky um, you see a TV clip and it's over. The great thing about, about blogs or um, video content, it, it's evergreen. It's evergreen. Yeah. And therefore, you know, if you make it not date specific, but you make it something that's, that's relevant. I mean, you know, your audience um, is looking at this. Why, why do we follow people? Human creativity and trust. Those are the three big words. We either want to be entertained, we want to see something creative and different, uh, but we also want to know that we can trust that person. Yeah. Um, so always be mindful when you're creating content. That's what it's all about. Yeah. No, I think you're right. And what you will see is, you know, maybe I'm not searching for whatever topic you have. I may not be searching for it today. And so we forget about uh, well, it's the instantaneous, uh, instant gratification society. If I'll post, uh, some content today, if I don't have, you know, a million hits this afternoon or tomorrow, I'm like, oh, that was a total failure. 
what we have to look is the longevity of that it lives forever and if we continue to release content out there it just it's compounding effect it just builds and builds because what i think happens a lot of times is uh maybe tomorrow you're searching for something i posted uh six months ago you read it but then it leads you to what i just posted in the last week or two so definitely and that that was a that was another question i was going to have uh is to ask is, so tell us why is this important to me as a businessman, small businesses, why is influencer marketing marketing important or why should it be, why should we look at it more importantly? Because simply we trust the opinions of others more than we do traditional advertising. You know, how do you get your brand to be, to, to stand out more when, when other forms of marketing media are just not delivering? Yeah. I mean, the open rates on emails, are getting less and less well they are to to, to prospect yeah if you are looking at your existing audience maybe higher but certainly with uh, you know people's attention spans are getting less and less um you know what 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 we like to do is you know we like to listen to 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 the opinions of people that we like and trust and and therefore if you can have your voice told through others you know, oh, you should work with Roy. He's a, he's a great guy. He's effectively what you're doing is you're getting loads of referrals and reference points exactly. from other people. Because if you said you were great, well, you <laughs> would say that, wouldn't you? <laughs> but but yeah. but if I say you're great, then it's different. <laughs> yeah. Or if my mother says I'm great, and probably people expect that. <laughs> no, and that's. I think it's good to you know that is a great reason. But I think we also need to look at the cost. As you were saying earlier, if if we win a traditional, let's just say a TV spot, uh, there's all the people that you just suggested, the script writers, the production, the equipment, all of this. Then the biggest part is we have to buy that time on the TV. You know, then you have to pick that slot. Uh, do I want it to run at the morning news? Is it night? Is it overnight? You know, how in the cost varies. You know, from the different slots, but. I don't know what it is for a local commercial anymore, but I can guarantee you it's a lot of money where we think about, and, and it's not that this is free and this is something I want to be sure and stress is that, you know, these um, content marketers or the influencers, they have spent a lot of time in their own money and energy building up these audiences. And so they are going to be due some kind of, um, uh, compensation, you know, if they help us out, this is not, you know, we don't, I don't want anybody to think what we're saying is that these people are going to, you know, we just reach out and they're going to pick us up for free. You know, there's going to be a cost, but I think okay. if we look at the cost of this versus the cost of the traditional media, probably a fraction. And then that second part that you just mentioned is that if it goes up on Instagram, Facebook, you know, YouTube, anywhere, really, it's going to live there forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, actually, there are some studies that talk about 11 times greater ROI, return on investment, than, than other forms of marketing media. And that's why this industry is cl- is going to be close to $15 billion in 2022 from just $1.6 billion in 2016. So it is, it is, and, and you know, that is massive. Yeah. A massive growth in that period and it's only going to get bigger the pandemic actually has only uh, lifted the industry even more because more of us are online more of us have been exposed to yeah. uh watching content creators tiktok and, and instagram and others and we've discovered influencers um and and that i think is really exciting yeah uh, as well yeah and it, you know the recent the one that we had just discuss for a minute before we got on here i think is the uh it's a great story but it was the guy that was uh, his car broke down so he's like hey i'm gonna get my skateboard out he's singing his song drinking i think it was a uh, ocean spray juice and so they did an awesome thing by picking him up and then you know it really just blew up even more for them so you know i think we have to also look for those opportunities where you know we can make a big splash as well yeah, I mean, just on that one, I think what, what makes those videos work really, really well is when it's not so in-your-face advertising. It's seen as almost like product placements, 
Yes. So it, uh, I mean, I've actually seen um, uh, butter brands where they've um, they've done almost butter sculpture. Yeah. You know, there have been other things where there's been chefs and the the product that's being promoted is just on the table there. It's yeah. it's not just held up like, look at this amazing <laughs> product. You know, because actually, these, these a lot of these guys are super smart now. They don't want to do that because yeah. um, it doesn't really work. Yeah. And they know that because their audience will tell them so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And let's not let's not forget that the influencers have a vested interest in making a collaboration work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, product placement is nothing that, it's not something that hasn't been around forever. I think about, you know, TV programs and movies. Uh, that's something that they figured out a long time ago was instead of me coming out and telling you that, uh, hey, I want you to drink my cola because it's the very best out there or drink my beer, uh, you know, if James Bond is shown in a movie drinking my beer or my cola, uh, people resonate like, oh, my gosh, if it's good enough for James Bond to be drinking it, then uh, definitely I'm going to go out and get some of that. So I think you're right there. It has a huge impact with more of just not being in your face and more of, hey, I use this product. You know, if people think that uh, I'm cool and I'm that influencer, if I'm using that product, then other people are going to probably gravitate to that as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, so um, let's talk about if I wanted to start this today, I'm, you know, going to jump out there, find me an influencer. Where would we even start? I know our message needs, uh, you know, we need to find the channel, I guess, where, but let's just go with a uh, a business, you know, maybe I want to look through LinkedIn, find somebody on there. And then also, uh, I want to tie that into your index. I think that's awesome that you have this index that, that do you publish that as well? Uh, ever so often? Um, well, what we do with the index is, uh, I mean, the top 100, the top 50 type of index isn't, isn't new to, um, society you know publishers and magazine publishers have often done this right. i think what's particularly different about mine is i'm taking this product offering to trade associations and professional membership communities and saying well why don't you have you're in authority position why don't um, we help create this top 100 most influential people in the food industry in the um uh in the bathroom and tap industry what, what whatever um and we we work at um yeah creating this product offering and we've had some fantastic reaction to it okay. uh, because when you're involving people they like to be recognized and what do they do they prom they're delighted when they are and they promote it on social media so the person that's that's, that's organizing this index sees their uh their, ref, their, their brand amplified hugely as a result of what's happening okay. because, it, I mean, it, it comes back to user-generated content. Yeah. And that is one of the biggest growth areas at the moment is when you've got, uh, when you almost, the same thing as my membership space, what you want to do is, is create the pool, create the environment yeah. for people to connect with each other. Yeah. So you're not doing all of the work. You are facilitating. You're putting nuggets of content in, helping and grow it. And, and actually, we, although obviously influencer marketing is what we're talking about today, because I've got a strong background in membership, there is a there's been a massive growth in uh, communities. Communities because people want to feel part of something, and they when they can learn from other people that have been attributed to your community. Yeah then uh, then they, they will receive their value. Yeah. So uh, I don't want you to give away the secret sauce, but so what are some of the, uh, what are some of the metrics that go into to that list to determine, is it, you know, the number of postings that they have that, you know, let's just talk about food industry it would be the number of postings somebody had on the food industry kind of coupled with their followers, their engagement. It's just a kind of a, take a lot of different, indexes and kind of wrap them together absolutely yeah so exactly that we'll look at we'll, but we'll also look at not just social media we'll look at google as well so to see if they've been in the news um we'll work with what we'll also do is create a, a methodology that one of the problems with some of these top 100 influencer indexes 
is people can be influential and not have a massive presence on on social media which is what we're trying to change of course um we find that a lot of younger people have but a lot of older people haven't so what we try and do is create um a um a waiting so if they've been in the industry a certain amount of time, that gets so many points. If they have got a presence and a level of engagement, so it's it's all driven by sort of a point score. Okay. okay. Um, but what we want to do is we want to shake things up a bit. We also what we want to work with the association and make sure that we haven't missed anybody. We've got the right people. Right. All right. And that, you know, I'm sorry, I kind of threw a bunch of stuff at you there, but let's get back to, okay, so I want to start today. You know, can you kind of give me like a couple, two or three steps of things that, uh, how I should go about finding somebody on my channel to deliver my message? So if you were to go on to uh, Instagram, for example, um, what the most important thing is, is what are the hashtags that would be relevant to the services that you provide? So if it's um, direct marketing, if it's um, podcasts, mar marketing podcasts, um, what we want to do is um, uh, search those hashtags and see who's talking about those subjects. So that's the first thing. The other thing is to look at your direct competitors and see who is following those people. Yeah. Um, because if you can find out and scan some of those people, they may well be interested in your audience as well, but also have quite a sizable audience themselves. Yeah. So there's a couple of things. Um, and I think the other thing is, is when you are posting content, I mean, just I had my book launch recently in the UK. I've got the, the um, one in America on the 30th of March but I needed to make sure that I had a lot of engagement on the day of my book launch because it would be very embarrassing for me to be promoting influence marketing <laughs> if I didn't have many followers uh, or we didn't. So I put this on LinkedIn um, and I, uh, I put a personal picture of me with my book to a table. And um, the most important thing with any form of posting on social media is the first two hours are golden. Okay. So um, if any of you don't know that is, you know, it's, sometimes it's worth considering if you've got friends and you've got a very important post you've got to get out. Uh, I, I occasionally WhatsApp people and say, look, I'm going to put a very important post out. Would you mind sharing or commenting? on it?" And if they do that in the first two hours, then uh, all of a sudden what the algorithms do is push that out quicker and quicker and quicker yeah ah, so okay. that's how viral campaigns happen because people react quickly i.e they share and they comment very quickly that's what creates a viral campaign that's why it travels quickly okay. because if you think about it lots of times you know, you'll have, you'll have put out a, a tweet or let you say, oh my God, I've only got two views or I've got, you know, three people commenting. It feels like this is a waste of time. And because what it's doing is it, the algorithm is only sending out that content to a very, very small percentage of your total follower base, as little as five or 10%. So um, as once those people comment and like, boom, it pushes it out to more. And if those people like and comment, boom, it pushes it out to even more. Ah, okay. Right. Yeah. So that's the that's the that is that is really the sweet source. And to, to prove this worked, I had sixteen thousand views on that post, a hundred and forty comments, and fifteen reshares. Um, and that that was the biggest one I'd ever I'd ever had actually. <laughs> on linkedin yeah. but the reason that i said it is because I, I literally asked two or three people at the beginning i said would you mind just commenting on that yeah and yeah. once they did it then other people i then i mean actually it did work quite organically i have to say but i i if i'm honest i gave it a bit of a nudge yeah no that's <laughs> and, a good and, 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 there's, and there's nothing wrong with that i've also noticed that other people um that were, I'm part of a lobbying group for small businesses, and they had a, what we call a Twitter bomb. Have you heard of that? No. Twitter bomb, yeah. So basically, 
uh, within the community, they say, right, we're going to um, we're going to try and get noticed and even print. So they tell everybody to um, put a tweet out or share and like everybody else's tweet at eight o'clock. Well, oh, okay. a specific time on a specific day. And because this was involving trying to get the attention of the, the like Confederation of British Industry or, or somebody within business or government, they needed to rattle the cage. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was really, it was, it was amazing. I mean, I was, I was part of it just to yeah. see how much, how much traffic was going through because it was, it was timed. Interesting. All right. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. And I did want to mention, you know, not only, uh, I'm going to give you a chance to, you know, tell people how they can get a hold of you, but wanted to mention your book influencer marketing strategy. And you said it's going to be available here in the States, uh, March 30th, a couple more days, I guess, probably like, uh, yeah, I guess I'd be like on Tuesday. So <laughs> Yeah, it's on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, if I don't know if you're when the podcast is going to be out, but we could prove we could prove that we could show if anybody wants to, I am going to do a post on Tuesday. So if any of you are listening and want to go over to my LinkedIn, um, uh, LinkedIn account, and want to comment on it, then uh, we can, uh, hopefully okay. it will do do the same thing. <laughs> again. I'll, I'll definitely. And I will comment, I will like back all of your listeners uh, responses okay all right great well um one question we ask uh, is is it well before we go is there anything else that you want to put out we're uh i've taken a lot of your time i know that but uh just want to see is there anything any final words that you'd like to talk about influencer marketing um i think my final words are give it a try you know and if any of your listeners want to drop me a line uh through my website or on any of my social media and just want to ask me a question as to, look, I'm thinking about this or I'm in a particular type of business, I'm not sure, if, you know, ask me, ask me. I mean, I've put so much in the book, it's taken me 18 months to write. So it's it's, it's not just, it, it's really almost like a compendium, compendium of, of knowledge and lots of uh, links to other good sites, uh, and uh, influencer platforms and, and all sorts. There's a glossary of terms, lots of case studies uh, in there. When, and that, that I think does help is when you know that somebody else has done it and what results they've had. Yeah. But, um, you know, all I would say, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, it's going to take some time. Um, but, you know, if, if you do it properly and you do it through the right process, you're going to find some amazing results. All right. Well, Gordon, thanks so much for being here. Uh, one wrap up question that we always ask is, so uh, what is a tool that you use in your daily life, a habit, something, it could be professional, personal, something that you just feel like adds a lot of value to your day? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do I do? Um, I, tell you what, I can't think of anything specific because I do loads of things, but there's a, um, is it remove background there's a there's a great little tool called remove bg i think it's called, called remove gb yeah check it out and i tell you what i've used that so many times now so when you've got a particular product and you want to remove a certain part of it uh it's great it's an awesome tool and it's free okay Awesome. We'll check that out. All right, Gordon, again, thanks so much. Tell everybody, of course, uh, where we will be able to find your book, number one, when it comes out. Number two, if they want to reach out and, you know, just find out more information about you, uh, what's a good place to do that as well? Thank you, Roy. Um, yeah, so um, you can go over to my website, which is uh, www.gordonglenster.com. Uh, you can find me on all of the major social channels. It's going to be in all leading bookstores in America from the 30th, Amazon for sure. I don't know all of the distributors, but uh, it certainly will be. Um, and uh, also uh, do check out my podcast, um, which is all about influence marketing. And that is called Influence, the global podcast on influence and marketing. And that, again, is on uh, uh, on iTunes, Spotify, and all the other sort of leading uh, platforms. But uh, thanks again, Roy, for having me as your guest. Yeah, no, it's been awesome, and uh, we will certainly get you back because this is it's 
this is something that evolves. I mean, we, if we can figure it out today, we're already behind uh, where, where we should be. So uh, we'll definitely get you back on. It's been an interesting conversation. And I think this is definitely something that, uh, you know, all businesses of all sizes need to look at because of the affordability and the reach and the longevity. There's just so many great things about it. So y'all reach out, pick up Gordon's book for sure, but also reach out to him, see how he can help you get your campaign started and make it a great success. So that's going to do it for another episode of the Business of Business podcast. Uh, you can find us, of course, at www.thebusinessofbusinesspodcast.com. We are on all the major social media networks as well as podcast platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, Google, Spotify. If we're not on one that you listen to, please reach out. I'd be glad to uh, get us added to that one. So until next time, take care of yourself and take care of your business. <laughs>